G'day guys, welcome to G-Man Specs. Today we're gonna to take a look at a video called Five Reasons Why Men Are Going Their Own Way. This is by a creator called Sarah Dawn Moore. She's quite large, it's the first time I've heard of her. She has 503K subs. So if you wanna go over there and see the original video, I probably won't get through the whole thing here. So I'll put the link in the description and if you enjoy her content, please give her a like, comment, um, and sub to her um, to appreciate her original content. Marriage is not really for men. If you ask probably 90% of men out there if they want to get married right now, they would probably say, why? What's the point? Marriage doesn't really mean anything else for me. I have the relationship. I get the girl. I get to have sex with the girl. I get to have kids and I can support her. But where they see other friends that have made the mistake of getting married, where they've seen half of their life savings washed out, where they are alone without their kids, where custody has been ripped away from them, where they're living in an apartment, a one bedroom apartment with their two kids trying to make ends meet because they've been kicked out of the house. So I think we have to like take a step back, right? And think to ourselves as women, why is there a benefit for a man to get married unless he is extremely religious and or Christian or believes that, you know, in the sanctity of the family. But I understand when they say it's, it's really hard for them to believe in that when women are filing 80% of the time. Granted, a lot of women file because they need the child support or they need the alimony because they don't, they never made as much or they're not making as much. So it's kind of like, there's a greater sense of urgency for a woman to file because of finances. But men are like, okay, great, fine. We're just gonna take the we're just gonna take it off the table then. We'll just be common law. We'll just we'll just hang out. We'll have a relationship because if there's no so I'm going to stop it there. So she made a few points. I wanted to hear her out a little bit. And as I said, guys, I'm always a little bit skeptical of females in the space, but I think she's articulating it quite well. Um, but okay, why? Why do men not see value in marriage, especially when they get a little bit older? Um, as you said, yes, you do see a trail of destruction, whether it be through your own friends um, who've gotten wiped out. For me, it's Larry. Um, myself, I had a pretty bad experience, but I didn't get wiped out. I've seen um, a lot of other guys have a really bad experiences in my social network. And once again, guys write into me and tell me their stories and in the comments of all my videos. So I have a lot of anecdotal experience um, to see either through my own um, eyes um, or through the experience of others that it can be a very high risk proposition. So that's why a lot of guys, especially on the back end of being married once uh, and coming out the other side, they really can't see the value in it because the commitment is that you've given up uh, your own freedom. Um, you've given up a lot of the time a lot of your own finances to be to sacrifice all of that into the relationship, into the kids, um, into the wife, and providing. You know, uh, you're getting a mortgage, maybe a bigger mortgage than what you wanted. Uh, the wife wants a bigger house than what you'd be comfortable paying, but you do it because you're pressured into it. You get two cars, you got to get new cars every sort of three to five years to keep up with the Joneses. Um, it's all always on debt, um, credit. Um, so you're you're constantly paying for something. You're constantly trapped into the system, and when you come out the other end. You think to yourself, especially if you've gone through a, a bad divorce, right? So a lot of people do get divorced. It's just the reality of how it goes. Uh, you come out the other side. Um, and if you have been one of the ones um, who are fortunate, actually, to have a, a reasonable human being that you're married to and you sort of go your own way without too much carnage, which I think is very, very rare, um, you probably won't understand it. But if you've gone through the experience of fighting it out, battling it out through court, and really seeing that all you ever were to a woman, especially at the end, especially once all the checks and balances are done, um, is a paycheck or a source of them to extract some, um, you know, capital out of um, on the way out, that becomes really sombering. And so I think that's why a lot of men experience that. Uh, so once you, once you once you see that, you think, and once you experience that, you think. What is the point? But I'm going to juxtapose that with what we're sold um, as men from society. And I think what men um, are almost tricked to believe uh, that marriage is um, and why we sacrifice ourselves willingly um, to this without knowing any better until it's uh, too late. So as men, we have an honor system. Um, as men, um, generally, we want to 
we do get a lot of enjoyment and fulfillment out of our lives by providing, whether it be um, for a, for the family unit, uh, whether it be a wife and and a couple of kids, right? But what we don't know um, or understand is the nature um, of women as a at a young age. So men buy into the whole provider role. They think that's what men do. That's what we're taught to do. And I have no objections with that. But a man then expects and is taught that he's going to get a wife um, who's also going to support and play a role into the family. And they're going to be a team together. They're going to take over the world together. That's what men are are, are buying into. Not being a workhorse um, that gets nothing out of it, that gets used up. And then once he's been flogged to death, he gets put out of his misery, gets a bullet put in his head, as I say. That's what the objection with marriage is. Now, before I get started on the next section... I, I don't think you can escape that, especially in this country. So they, they, you hear a lot of, I think it's on American um, channels. This is, I think it's from American Lady. Yeah, I think there are uh, places in America where you can avoid that. You can avoid getting um, divorce rates or um, the common law uh, on certain states. Now, I'm not aware of all the law and shit over there. You cannot escape it in Australia. So if you're common law de facto, especially you've got kids, you may as well be married. There's no escaping it. So this sort of argument doesn't apply. So if you um, have a woman move in with you and you start doing the stupid, please don't do this, the joint bank account stuff, melding your money, a lot of women will pressure you to do that. Um, They'll want you to get uh, joint bank accounts because for them, that's progress. Women want progress and it happens inch by inch. All of a sudden, you've got joint bank accounts and savings accounts where all your money is going into, she has access to it, her money goes into which a lot of the time is a lot less than yours, right? And then what happens on the way out? Um, it happened to me, and I've heard it happen to a bunch of other guys. They wipe out and clean out your accounts. So you're left with jack shit while you're, while you're trying to fight it through um, uh, a litigation process, right? So women will do the most dodgiest, most ruthless things. And so when a man sees that, especially when it comes to a man's finances, which I believe, in my opinion, are sacred to a man because a man's finances the summation of his effort and his labor and success in life. So it's an attack on all his time investment into his pursuits and the hard work he's done throughout his life. It isn't just the money. People go, oh, life's just not about money. It's easy to say that when you don't have any or when you're trying to extract it from somebody else. That's my rant on that point. No guarantee that that woman is going to stay. Then why sacrifice so much? They're hearing it from their friends. They're seeing it on the media. You can't go a day without hearing about this statistic that divorce is happening all around us. And furthermore, people are just choosing not to get married. I I don't think that really applies. I I, I don't. I don't. Because I'm hearing guys, uh, younger blokes. I was even talking to a guy that um, lives very close to me. I was actually gardening uh, a couple of days ago. And he's a young doctor, um, 30 years old, just got out of his um, university and... Uh, He's engaged. He was telling me how happy he was. He's looking forward to the wedding. And I'm just thinking, I hope it works out for you, buddy, because you've got a lot to lose. I didn't say anything. That's not my place. I can't go preaching to people who are completely plugged in. But you've got a lot of guys who, they're living in fantasy land. And I was like this guy when I was his age. I thought, okay, I'll get married to this girl. I've got the girl. Life's going to be perfect afterwards. So a lot of guys aren't saying, I'm not getting married. Uh, The guys who are saying, I'm not getting married, are the ones that are struggling in the dating market. And so then they say, I'm not getting married. The ones who can still get the girl, um, they're still marrying the girls, but they're finding out the hard way that it isn't a great deal. So don't agree that men are avoiding marriage en masse. I think that is a little bit of a uh, a myth. Um, And... Yeah, I think men are just going to have to learn their hard way, a hard way themselves, hard lessons ourselves. We are uh, headstrong. We have big egos. We think everything's going to be different for us. I did have guys here and there saying to me, marriage isn't great. I used to work with the bloke, and he would have been about 50. Um, I was working in a consulting firm at the time, and he was pretty pretty base. He used to just say shit to me because I think he picked up I was a bit of a, you know, a normal dude. He could actually say things to me in an office environment, which is pretty rare. And he goes, if you do get married, mate, you're just you're never having sex again. I'm just letting you know that, like, you know. And I was like, yeah, whatever. This bloke, you know, he's not getting a root because of whatever, you know. He's a, whatever. I made up all these. It won't happen to me. What happened? I got married, and the sex just died off instantly. So this guy was telling me the truth. But we as men, no, nah, it won't happen to us. You know, we're we're the exception. It's like guys who are. Oh, he's just an analogy. You want to go and smoke um, two packs of Winnie Blues a day, and there's a bloke. Um, you see him, you know, he's 60 years old with his, uh, he's at the hole, he's like, meh, meh, meh. he's got that thing and he's trying to tell you not to smoke. You go, yeah, whatever, it won't happen to me, you know, this fucking bloke who's just had a bit of bad luck. 
same thing, guys. We watch the we watch the uh, the sheep, you know, like uh, lambs and, and and beef, you know, cows going into the slaughterhouse. You see those pictures, and they're watching bang get a bullet, and it keeps going in the door. It's going to be different for you boys. So, I think guys are thinking about it maybe a little bit more, but really. I don't think guys start pushing this narrative until they've copped it. But what if marriage is just an antiquated system? What if it doesn't matter anymore? And and what if it was for women all along? And now we're just kind of seeing an evolution of that where men are saying, what's it for anyway? And I don't necessarily disagree with them. If you're making your own money and if you're a woman who is working and helping to support the family, then maybe we need to talk about having separate bank accounts. Maybe we need to talk about a prenup. Maybe we need to really go into this as a business does, as two partners would starting a business. I mean, that sounds perfect, doesn't it? But we, as we all know, guys, prenuptial agreements and binding financial agreements, um, they don't very hold up very well, especially once some of the conditions change. So unless you want to get those done every one or two years, uh, it's not going to be worth, uh, it's not going to be any more than a piece of paper to wipe your ass with uh, at some point in time, especially if you have children in the mix. Uh, that, that goes out the window. Especially, I think, especially this woman, um, I oh, know nothing about it, but say she's a successful woman. Um, you know, she's quite quite a big channel. She'd be making quite a bit of money, I suspect. She probably has other business endeavors. She's probably selling courses and shit like that. Of course, she's going to be more financially um, minded when it comes to partnering up and understanding it from a man's perspective because she has something to lose. Women who don't um, have as much as a man or don't earn much or are not financially minded, which is a lot of them, right? It's not being sexist. A lot of them just don't operate that way. They just don't think like a man does from a financial perspective. They're not going to say that things should be treated separately. It's like, think about this. How many times have you heard of someone saying, I've had this happen. Uh, I've had guys say this to me and write me emails about it and I've read about it. And you get a guy say um, he's earning $200,000 a year and uh, he's with his girlfriend who earns $50,000 a year. The way that the female mind thinks is if you're going to be contributing to a partnership together, it is not going to be 50-50. So if the guy's making two hundred. dollars and she's making 50, well, she's like, well, I should only pay the proportionate amount of rent. It makes no sense to me. It's like saying, I want a large pizza, but I also want to pay for a small one because I can't afford it. So that's what a lot of girls will do. So I think it's good that uh, they're showing some sort of um, self-awareness in, in what it's like for a man. However, I don't buy it. I don't think many women say that. It's They, they say it's uh, unromantic. You know, you're not romantic. You're thinking that the marriage is going to end. And my, and my argument to that is because I said this, I tried to put a prenup in place. And guys, I wasn't very wealthy at the time. I didn't have much, but I had a property um, and I had a little bit of money in the bank that I'd worked very, very hard for. I, I, I said, I want to get a prenup, sure, agreement. Oh my God, guys, the absolute drama I was put through. I just got ground down and um, essentially, yeah, I'm not romantic and you think we're not going to work out and we're starting on a bad foot and blah, 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 blah. You know what I did? I bitched out, right? I said, okay, okay, yeah, okay. And let her just argue that and stamp it out. Guess what? Only a couple of years later, I was in family court with someone trying to take all my money off me. So listen to your gut, guys, especially with that sort of thing. If a woman is ranting and carrying on about not being romantic, um, if you are trying to remove that insurance policy, which is a financial settlement upon breakup, have a real think as to why that might be. And what are you seeing as to her? All right? You seen as a potential insurance policy if things don't work out? That's generally how they look at it, whether they say or admit that or not. Especially women who say it's not romantic. I don't think it's very romantic as a man then if um, if I just want to protect myself. Because a lot of men don't go into marriage thinking it's going to end. But they're saying in that really random, odd occasion that in our mind we think it's never going to happen to us. I want to be somewhat protected. That's seen as unromantic? I don't know. Like, I just can't see the logic, but that's just women shaming tactics for men so that men don't put those boundaries in place. I have partners, I have business, and we signed contracts. We had it all laid out so that if there was a dissolution of the relationship, that we would know exactly what to do. There's- I want to say one more thing. So women are starting to say this shit now because they, you know, women are, especially women who are in the corporate world and might make big money or own small businesses or whatever it is, um, entrepreneurs and actually have some net worth. Yeah, they're protective of that. Now they're starting to think like, man, well, hang on, I don't want some guy taking my shit because family, uh, family law isn't gender um, focused. It's who has the most to carve up. So you will get blokes who 
um, can get with women who have more money and, and, and roll them over the over the coals. You don't hear about much of that because it's not a very common thing. Um, but now as more and more women have more and more money, they're trying to say, oh, hang on, no, I want a prenup. If you go on Reddit, go into that relationship advice. Sometimes I'll just read that for a bit of fun and just to get a bit of a red pill every now and again about women who have money and they're worried that the man's going to take it from them and how to best protect themselves. It's okay for women to say that, but it's not okay for men. So it goes to show you how skewed the view is uh, of society. All right, guys, so I'm not sure. I'm going to be roughly halfway through here, I reckon. I don't think I'm going to drag this one on much more than about 30 minutes. Um, so if you're new to the channel, you're enjoying my thoughts on things um, and me ranting uh, wildly and screaming at clouds, uh, please subscribe to the channel, aiming for 10K subs. That will be fantastic. And the best way to support the channel, guys, is just watch the videos through to the end. I'll never ask you to buy courses or any shit like that, but the best way you can help me is just watch the videos through because YouTube will then push you out. Put a comment, put a like, all that sort of jazz that every other YouTuber asks you to do. There's no hard feelings. There was no emotion involved. This was about a logical decision and two people coming together to have a, a goal. And if that goal was not met, or if one party decided that they weren't in that goal, then the contract would be dissolved and, and each party would be made whole. So that's my suggestion is like, if we're going to consider marriage, women, we have to be more logical when we think about this. We have to take emotion out of it. And as, I yeah, mean, good as on a you. woman, like, good hello, that might be some near impossible. Yeah. But I'm a pretty logical woman and I see things clearly and, and I've been in the business world. So I have a bit of a, a, a greater understanding of how these things should go. It's like, what does love have to do with it? So I think yeah, well, wait and see. And you get women like this then that are still trying, because they go for guys who have more money than them. They still try and rake them across the coals. So it doesn't matter if she's making 250 She might marry a guy or get with a guy who's got 500 On the way out, all this bullshit about being independent, strong, etc., that falls off. Because I used to cop that from 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 my ex. Oh, she's independent. She does what she you knows. She's a self-starter and all that sort of stuff. Guess what? Uh, a second, as soon as that uh, the, the shoe dropped that she wanted to separate, it was all about money straight away. It was straight away she was scheming and trying to work out what she could get out of it. Straight to lawyers. I had to go straight to lawyers. It was a nightmare. So they say all this shit, um, but once the reality of the situation lands, uh, you can see them backtrack on that pretty quick. I think that's one of the reasons why they're going their own way. They just don't see the purpose in it. And with today's women, with what I'm seeing... I'm not quite sure I disagree. If you're going to get married, then you need to have a contractual discussion before. And if the contract does not work, then maybe it's just not a good idea to get married. So the second thing that I hear quite a bit from men, and again, I it's very hard for me to disagree with them what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing on social media, what I'm seeing from my clients, what they're telling me, what's out there, is the lack of traditional women and women expecting men to be still traditional. There's certain things that men should be expected to do. I believe that a man should pay for the first date, whether that is coffee, whether that is a bottle of wine. There's so many things that you can do that is not expensive. And if you are more of a traditional man, I truly believe you should be paying for the first date. But I think to an extent, look, I would, I would agree with that sentiment. Um, if you knew or, so, or has some sort of guarantee that that woman wasn't talking to five other dudes. In, in the way of uh, 2024, um, with uh, dating apps and all that and all the you, you go girl and multi-date and hot girl summer and all that, you know girls are talking to heaps of guys and seeing multiple guys. Whether, whether or not they're banging them is a different story, but they're still going on dates with them. So that's why guys don't want to pay for it. Why would you want to pay for something that a guy's or other guys are also paying for and getting access to, right? They're double dipping. And so that's why a lot of guys have issue paying. If you can somehow validate that she's not, you can't. But if you can somehow validate that, Absolutely, I think I think it does make sense. If you're a guy, you've asked her out, pay for the date. I have no issue with that. It's about paying for something that other guys are getting to and paying for. So there's double dipping and using you all up. You know, should a woman be dating five different guys at a time? No. Should a woman be sleeping with five guys at a time? No. Should a woman be on OnlyFans? I don't think I, not my cup of tea. You know, should a woman string a guy along? and just take him for a ride and take him out to so she can get free dinners like women don't know how to cook they're not cleaning 
I mean, and I'm sorry, but like the domestic duties were traditional woman roles. And I understand that we are both working, you know, but there comes a point in time where you have to delineate roles in a household to make it work. You know, there's just certain things that were passed down from female to female. Most females don't even know how to sew a button on a jacket, let alone cook a Thanksgiving meal. So, you know, I get we're all busy. I understand that life is different for our parents, but you know, there's sayings that have been around for 30 years, right? Like the 30 years, more like thousands of years, but you know, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Nobody just made like- Through his stomach and through his rock hard schlong. <laughs> That's how it is. They didn't just make that saying up. It's been around for a long time. So it's like women are- It's not through his stomach. It's not the act of actually eating the food, which is nice. It's the nurturing element of being cared for. We like that. It's just the reality. Guys are like, oh, I'll cook my own food. It's nice when a woman just wants to just do something nice for you and cook you a nice meal. We, 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 we enjoy that. And, and it's not a hard thing for a woman to do. It's a couple of hours in the kitchen or something. Every now and again, not every day. I've like, you know, I've really always enjoyed it when I've been out dating and, and women are really nice to me and cook me nice meals and really just being nurturing because you can tell that they really want you because they're doing those nice things for you. Now, whether or not they keep it up in the long term, that's a different story. But as a man, I can tell you now, it isn't so much the food, it's the act of just being nice because a lot of men don't even get that. Expecting men to still do these things, but then they're not taking the time to invest in becoming like wifey material. And that's why I think there are older women like myself, you know, other women out there that are, are realizing that our mothers kind of failed us, that they didn't really teach us because we got caught up in this whole sexual revolution situation. And the women that I see that have done very well with men, typically grew up in the South, typically grew up in more traditional families, typically saw their mom being a homemaker, but we have demonized that amongst- Typically it was just a, maybe a decent woman to be around, right? It provided the man some some tangible value back. Not, not only is on the table bullshit, it's just some tangible value. Man goes out, breaks his back, um, lives a stressful life, um, a life of sacrifice for a wife and kids. What's not nicer than coming home and telling a woman uh, a woman telling you that she's cooked you a nice meal and you walk in the door and you're being appreciated for the hard work that you've done. That's the way I see it. A lot of men don't get that. They get, oh, you walk in the door um, and she's sitting there or and she wants you to cook dinner. What's for dinner, they'll say when you walk in the door. Or you might have a, a woman, um, and I can't really look judge this, but another woman uh, who's a bit of a, a corporate person, they're working big hours too, so you're not really getting that. So you got to come home and then you both got to sort of have a, a power struggle who's cooking. Um, or you got to go out and buy things. So I think a lot of those old time values are fading out. I don't think it's 100% woman's fault. I think it's also a factor of society and both people having to work these days and having to work hard um, to get a little semblance of feeling like you're getting ahead in life. So I think all those traditional things isn't just the woman's fault, right? It's just the way it is that we would now have to focus on trying to earn money as well. So I won't be just fully blatant, um, you know, saying it's their fault women in our culture we don't appreciate homemakers and and i will say that feminism has not helped that i was caught up in that as well being a homemaker was looked upon as negatively and i remember judging my friends for it i remember looking down at them and saying oh like just a housewife that is such a common group think of women so until we like abolish this, until we accept women for who they are and say, it's okay to do this. Like it's okay to learn to how to, to run a household and have the. Yeah. All right. She's made that point, but I'm going to say one thing, guys, I know guys want to dream about having a Susie homemaker at home, you know, um, you know, she's stare barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen and all that sort of shit. Okay, that's fine. But also think about future protection, right? If you go with women who don't have jobs and just a homemaker, um, you know, well, guess what happens to you on the way out when they decide that they want to eat, pray, love, go to Italy or whatever with your money, bag Sergio, Sergio the scuba diver, um, you know, um, on a boat off the coast of Italy. 
Guess who's paying for that? You are. You're paying for Sergio to dig your wife's guts out because she didn't earn any money. And guess what's going to happen? The government um, and the legal system is going to safeguard women's bad decisions uh, and uh, life choices by your, your paying for that. Because the government doesn't want to pay for it. They don't want more welfare or Centrelink recipients. So, guys, I always say this. I know a lot of guys in the space say, oh, no, you want a woman who stays home, a trad wife. Uh, I, I Absolutely, I'm against that based on what I've seen and my experience. You know what saved me, guys, from losing everything I had? Like, I copped the big hit. I copped the big punch to the guts. But you know what saved me? My ex had a high-paying job. So I, my superannuation wasn't touched and all that sort of stuff. Only a little bit of capital. When I say a little bit, look, enough to really hurt someone. But I didn't get wiped. I recovered in just a few years. Put my head down, went into monk mode, recovered. Yeah, I was out monster hunting, but I wasn't having relationships with women. I was able to recover in three or four years. A lot of guys never come back from it because they buy into the fantasy of having the woman at home. She might work you know, a couple of days at Coles or Woolworths or some uh, bullshit um, part-time job, you know, an early, uh, early education care center or something where they're making 40 grand a year. And you're the guy, you're out making 150, 200. You might have your own business. You're breaking your back. Guess what happens to you when you go through the divorce uh, court and the family uh, family law system? All your money gets uh, extracted from you and they get it on the way out. I've, I've talked about my mate Larry. You guys think Larry doesn't exist because his life is so outrageous for all the things, the bad things that can happen to a guy. No, this exists. I'm not even, I haven't told you half the shit that this guy does or how has happened to him. But my mate Larry, he had this exact thing. He had the woman at home, the good Italian wife at home. That he thought he was getting, homemaker, absolutely fucked him. This guy is, like she said, living in a one-bedroom apartment. No, he's got a two-bedroom apartment, right? Um, and he doesn't barely see his kids. The kids don't even want to go there because the mum's poisoning them against him. Um, he's lost a whole bunch of money. He's probably even set back 20 years. Uh, he probably will never recover from the financial hit that he copped, right? So stay-at-home mums, that's my rant on that. No, you don't want to stay at home, mum. You want someone who's working. Otherwise, you are better off being on your own. Because whether it's a stay-at-home mum, people think, oh, well, she's staying at home and not going into the corporate world. There won't be any opportunity for her to go out and meet blokes, you know, high-status blokes and all that and cheat and do whatever. Yeah, sure, she's not going to come across as many high-status blokes. A woman who works at a, 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 either, sorry, not a woman who works, a woman who's a stay-at-home mum and has just the kids and drop-offs and school drop-offs, has a lot of um, hours in the day to fill up. Women need attention. It's just the way they are. If you're not giving it to them, they're going to start jumping on Facebook, Messenger, Snapchat, um, all the dating sites, all that. Start banging blokes so you're at work. You, you think it doesn't happen. It happens, guys. I'm telling you, I know it happens because I've been the guy that, unfortunately, these women have sex with. <laughs> it's like, so... I know when, guys hate it when I say this. Wives cheat and wives cheat uh, a lot. So if you're getting a stay-at-home mum, they're going to cheat a lot more than uh, a chick that's in the office. Sure, she might go on a business trip, and if she's going to cheat, they're going to cheat. All right? They're going to bang dudes at conferences and whatever happens. Um, but I think that is a myth that women in the corporate world cheat more than women that are at home. Absolutely, it is. So that's my rant on that. Yeah, put in the comments, guys. Uh, if you agree, disagree with me, what's your experience been like? I want to know. Have you had issues where you've had a woman who hasn't been a breadwinner or earned any money? Not breadwinner, but a, a solid contributor financially to your household. When it ended, did you cop a hiding? I'd love to hear about it. These domestic duties, men are like, okay, what do we, why? What's the point? Like, these women why would I want to be in a relationship with them? I'm just, I can go on a nap or I can get sex for whatever, you know, and I don't have. All right, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. We'll do one more. I'm just going to scan through. I don't want to uh, have the video go too long. You guys got the gist of the video, right? Um, guys are questioning all the different elements um, of relationships and what they're getting out of it. But I don't think you hear those stories as much anymore. It's like, if you're not making a certain amount, the fact that women are asking men how much they're making on the first date or before they even get together is like such a boundary violation. I couldn't even imagine asking someone what they make on the first date. It is just unbelievably disrespectful. I just actually like these questions because I would lie about them. So back when I was monster hunting, guys, if you guys are new to my channel, monster hunting is just serial womanizing, being a scumbag, leveraging female nature against themselves. Um, I'll just lie about it. I'll just lie. I'll make a whole fake story up. 
because because if I've got a sniff of someone asking me questions, especially like within the first two sentences, they're going to ask you what you do for work. Uh, because in Australia, I haven't had women ask me directly, how much money do you make? They, they'll say, what do you do for work? Now, some people will say, well, that's just a general conversation. It's small talk. Small talk. No, no, no. Not from a woman. It's not because they're going to work out roughly how much you make based off that. Roughly. If they have any sort of idea about um, careers and earning potential of men. All right? So you just tell them what they want to hear. If they start asking questions like that, you've worked out straight away, root and boot. That's it. Yeah, lie. Be a Brycey. Be a Steve-O. Who gives a shit? Like, I, that, that's when I fully endorse playing the game and being a scumbag because really, it's not going to end well for you if you go with women like that because they're asking these questions. They're trying to sum you up, um, profile you from a financial and provider perspective straight off the bat. So I tell them what they want to hear, get what you want to get out of it and disappear. I have no hesitation in recommending that approach to women who come across like that. So again, men are like, if I'm not going to be able to... So anyway, guys, we're at half an hour. Um, This one could go for an hour. I don't want to push it that long. Uh, Guys, if you want to watch the rest of her video, as I said, once again, I think it's not too bad. She's quite reasonable, uh, but she does have a business in saying these talking points and being a, you know, half attractive woman. She's going to make big money on YouTube out of doing that, you know, uh, aligning with men, et cetera, giving coaching to men about men's issues from a woman's perspective. I find it bizarre, but men are paying for it and she's probably very wealthy because of it. So good on her. Um, So go, go check her channel out. I'm not saying, so everything she said here was right. Um, And uh, I don't have any disagreements with what she's saying. But once again, guys, just use your brain and, and see what why these channels uh, exist. Uh, it's to make money. All right. So once again, guys, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. I know time is valuable and precious and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.